smiles, everyone. Hi. Hey, everybody. <laughs> we were just queuing up to get the, the timing just right. I thought that was pretty good. A little late. Hi, everyone. I'm Lucas. I'm Abdul. As you can see below us, mm-hmm. written out in perfect spelling. Thank you, Debra Lee. <laughs> um, today, we're doing the episode four of ScreenFlow Live. Is that right? Four yeah. Already. Four. Might There's the first one by it. myself, which was not nearly as good as the next two, which brought you into the mix. <sighs> yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> and uh, this one hopefully will be the best of all of them. We are focusing on, well, last last month we started going through the, uh, gosh, I always forget the name of that window. Properties pane. The properties pane. The properties, which, you know, screen recording properties and video properties and all that kind of stuff. And we went through each one of those. We're going to go through each one of them. Last time we did video properties and how to add video actions and how to use all of those. And uh, this time we're going to move over to uh, the screen recordings and callouts. So we're going to run a quick show reel here, and we'll be back with all of that great information in just a second. And we're back. I'm still here. <laughs> didn't Still even here. go anywhere <laughs> we're back just like that um so we thought we'd just jump right into it actually abdul do you think you could pull up uh facebook just so we can read the comments there Ooh, good thinking Lucas. thank you yeah make sure to mute it though so we don't run the uh audio back well in. let me pull up my touch bar because <laughs> oh because you got a new mac Gosh. oh man you know what would be cool if it didn't crash my apps well, that too. I mean, but in the future, if ScreenFlow had some touch action on the new app. Mm, maybe. We'll see. Or on the we'll new see. App, we'll see. Mac, that'd be sweet. We'll see if that ever maybe happens. Maybe in the next version. Who knows? Um, but uh, yeah, I think we should just jump right in. Abdul's bringing up questions. Like like always, everybody, don't ever hesitate to ask questions. That's really why we're here. We're trying to fill up some time with some information we find useful, but the most engaging content is going to be when you guys ask us questions and we can answer them for you. So feel free to ask away. Um, and Debra Lee, if you could swing on over to the desktop, let's see if we can get uh screen flow up in the mix and just jump right into it here. Um, let me see. Should we start with a new document? I think we should. No, we got to start with a screen recording, don't we? Whoa. Yeah. Yeah, we need to record something. We got to record something. Let's go ahead and go to telestream.net, type in a little something, because oh, okay. I think that might come up. Well, I'm going to start the recording. Hopefully, you guys know how to do this. If not, a little plug here for June 15th. We're doing a webinar you can sign up for. It's going to be all about the basics. We're going to go through recording, editing, exporting, publishing, any anything that you need to do at the beginning of learning how mm-hmm. to sc- do ScreenFlow. Uh, but for now, we're just going to record this real fast. Mm-hmm. And just to clarify, not all about that bass, all about the basics. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're going to show the recording monitor. Oh, I forgot to add a camera, so we're not going to do that. I'm just not sure which one is which uh, monitor here. So let's just pull up Safari. Let's go to telestream.net. We're going to do a couple things here. Oh, look at that. We got a recently got a new home page. <sighs> and actually, you know, this, this whole thing that we're watching here in the middle, was that created. was made... In ScreenFlow. Mm. That's right. My big Mark. Uh, Mark, one of our web developers, he made this whole thing, and I helped him with it just to get everything perfect. And I think it turned out pretty rad. So this is our, our home page, and, of course, you can come and uh, come up to products, mm-hmm. and we can go over to ScreenFlow. Mm-hmm. By the way, if you ever have any questions and we're not here to help, you can come to this page and click on the Resources button. And we got white papers, documentations, um, Support, you can contact support, which would be someone like Abdul, webinars and trainings, demos and tutorials. This is where you can see any sort of promotions, all sorts of really good stuff here on this page. So let's stop the recording, and now we got some well, content. let's type something, because we just clicked on Oh, that's Telestream. right. I forgot to type. I forgot to type. Let's go to a, a different website called, oh, let's just go to Game Show real fast. Ooh, that's another right. product that we make. That's for live streaming video games. And uh, we've been having some some really slow computer actions today. So, but now let's go back to Telestream, Tele Amazonas, Telestream dot net. Let's do that, and we're back. So no, I you can stop the show. recording. Yeah, now. we we can stop the recording now. Yeah. If I can click the right button. All right. So now we've got a minute and forty four seconds of content. Let's just hope that yeah we were on the right monitor. So, 
Uh, you see any? I see Sarah speaking to us in French. I'll, in I'll say French. Mm, we're gonna have to use a little Google Translate on that, so that'll be fun. Um, let's go here. Je suis sur what téléphone. is your to- telephone number? I, I think that might be what is your telephone number, <laughs> right. uh, yes, where I can call you. Yes, yes. Uh, or maybe where we can translate something. So while Abdul's uh, translating some French comments. We are going to focus mainly on this area up here in the top right. That's where right now we're in the uh, the video tab. That's where we can add video actions, what we did last month. We have audio, which we're not going over today. We've got video motion, which we're not going over today. And then we've got screen recording, and we've got callouts. And this is the two tabs that we're really going to be focusing on today. Um, and just all the things you can do with it and, and best practices when you're adding screen recordings and callouts. Um, we'll eventually get to you know annotations and text and how to manipulate your media library to most benefit you. Hmm. She says I'm on the phone. Um, but uh, <laughs> how <are you> doing? <laughs> we got an audience out there. Yeah. So let's start with screen recordings. Let's click on this. Remember, this will always be grayed out until, until you select an applicable clip. Uh, I was going to try and do that in unison with you, but you, you know that a lot better than I do. So right. once we click on this clip, now we have access to all of these things. So show mouse pointer. This is one that I find to be something that I don't even realize that I can use and adds an extra level of subtlety to your screen recordings that is really nice. Mm-hmm. If you if you sometimes, you know, I do it often. You might have even seen it here. Um, let's see. There was a part in this where... Maybe if we just play it right here, you can see how my, my mouse is just moving all over the place. A little distracting sometimes. And if I was narrating that, I was already telling you where you could go. I don't need to be moving my mouse all the place. So I'm going to use T to split this clip, the letter T on my keyboard. And I'm going to come over here as well, and I'm going to split this. And now I have this my own little clip here in the middle. With its own set of properties. Own set of properties. Thank you. Good point. And what I can do is, if I if I watch it through here... I can see my mouse and it's moving around on the screen. And then we're going to go into this new clip and it's still there. But if I unclick this, show mouse pointer, watch what happens now. You can see my mouse moving around. We go into this new clip that I just created and my mouse is no longer there. You no longer have that really obnoxious mouse movement all over the place. And it's easy. You just come in here, make the clip, and show mouse pointer. Click mm-hmm. that off. And so just real quick on that, this is kind of one of those things that I guess we differentiate ourselves with some sort of free apps out there that could capture your screen, but they will burn that mouse in. Um, One thing to look out for, though, that we have discovered in um, the OS at the OS level, if you make changes to the mouse properties at the OS level, ScreenFlow can lose sight of that, that mouse and therefore this becomes inoperable. So just to clarify where that is in system preferences under accessibility and display, if I change this cursor to anything other than normal, we have a chance of losing that. Luckily, we're not, you know, we've done that, but we haven't experienced that here, but that is a possibility. A lot of people on like 5K monitors will do this because you just can't see your your mouse at that point Mm -hmm. Um, but just i wanted to point that out if you're ever experiencing that give that a quick look that might be a quick solution to that issue if you're having it so and to to just continue on with that sometimes you want to get rid of your mouse pointer but sometimes you want to do the opposite of that and you want to make it more apparent Um, and that's one of the reasons why you would make it bigger in the uh, properties of your own os but if you make it normal size, you can then go in afterwards and you can customize the look and feel of your pointer. You want to take over and show them this, these next couple things here? Um, with sure. that super sweet picture we just downloaded? Ooh, see. So obviously we've, we can increase the size of the mouse pointer here. Um, and see you later, Kyle. Um, that can be done just simply by... Make sure you click the right clip there. That is certainly true my own horn here so we can see that be varied here um, we can add a click effect to this if we were clicking we could have a radar we could invert it um, I don't think we have any clicking going on here per se but um, I think when we go up to change Ding. when we change the uh, website gotcha 
at any rate, a radar will appear upon click. It'll sort of branch out like a um, a wave in a water drop. Let's go here. Let's just show them real fast because it is it is kind of cool. Okay. And let's make it bigger let's so we can that. see how it happens. But now if you watch that, boom, 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 boom. Radar. Boom. And that's it. That's, that's all it. it was. Right. But it's a really nice way to focus people. If If what you're doing, maybe you're doing a software tutorial, which I do a lot with this. It's a really good way to focus people's eyes on where you're clicking. Got it. And to further question, bring sorry. attention to the, um, sorry, that screen fell, to the mouse, we can actually change it to an image of our choosing. And we have downloaded this PNG because everybody loves candy corn. And whoa, that's massive. <laughs> that certainly brings attention to the mouse. <laughs> wouldn't you agree? Um, however, that's a bit much, as we like to say. You're you're doing too much. So here we go. That is now the mouse cursor. So that you know that can be fun depending on your project. Obviously, if you want to keep it professional, you're not going to use candy corn, <laughs> but you can certainly <laughs> use the the image of your choice, preferably a PNG file with a transparency, just so there's no like square around it that's you know obstructing the vision of the mouse. There's um, a candy corn. There it is. So. Um, one one way to use th this particular feature without going overboard and putting a, a goofy picture in there is a lot of the times, like on a Mac, you see how the, the cursor is black. You can switch it to white. You can get a different – you can get the angle to go the other way. Like the, there are very, very subtle changes that you can make that is really helpful for using that uh, feature there. Mm -hmm. And, of course, you can change the opacity. Of course. Which is probably what you'd want to do with a candy corn cursors change the opacity as well fortunately that worked out <laughs> um matthew kirk connell says for another good way to track your mouse on screen is with an app on mac called pinpoint thank you matthew cool i don't know anything about pinpoint nor do i but we will check that out yeah it might be very helpful for you <coughs> out there uh sound on click abdul have you ever used sound on click only in troubleshooting just to make sure that it's working on my machine. Um, I've never really, I think that would be distracting if you've got something that's click heavy. If the click is actually the the piece that's paramount to your presentation, by all means use sounds on it. click. Yeah. But you can see that. Can and of get course, you can just, fast. you know, go to like a, any sort of free sound effects site and you can get exactly the, the tiny little sound that you want. Uh, save it to your desktop and just pull it in. And you can change the volume, and so every time you click your mouse, it'll play your little tiny or ring ring. Or create your own in-screen flow. Yeah, you can Pow. do that too. Export audio only. Um, keyboard keystrokes. Now, this is one that that I have had some issues with in the past, just because I didn't really understand how it worked. But let me, let's let's see. Let's start. Where did I type some things in? Oh, for game show. That's right. Here we go. Let's make a. Let's make our own little clip here. There we go. That's all I want is just that part. When I'm typing in game show up there into the URL search bar. So showing keystrokes, when you click this, it'll enable this whole area. Show all keys, only modifiers, height, position. This is the font width attached to clip, whatever it might be. So once we start, you'll see what happens here. Uh -huh. Woo, woo, woo. So it showed us right there every single key that I clicked on my way to gameshow.net. Now I'm going to do something here. Let's see if this works. I've never actually tried this. But I'm going to slow this clip down. All I did was double-click the clip. That will open up the clip inspector, and then you can adjust the speed. So I just turned this from a, you know, five second clip into a 20 second clip or something but now my typing goes much slower and now we can kind of see letter by letter what I've been typing into the URL bar mm -hmm. particularly useful for like people showing how to use Xcode or some sort of you know software writing language that they're using um, certainly not something you'd want to use if just an accent a, a general uh, marketing video or something like that because yeah. if you're trying to read that you're awesome number one and that would certainly take your focus away from <laughs> the overall um, point
point of the project. So now if I take off show all keys and say just show modifier keys, we're not going to see anything until maybe here at the end. Nope, it doesn't show that. So modifier key, would that be like shift or alt, command? Yeah, shift, alt, option, command, control, those things that give you different um, entry points into a particular key on your mm -hmm. keyboard. And then height. This is pretty self-explanatory. This right. is going to change the size mm -hmm. of the text box that automatically comes up at the bottom. Mm -hmm. You can change the position. I generally would put it a little bit on the smaller side. Mm -hmm. Change the width. And maybe even change the font if I want. Sure. Outline stroke. Ooh. That's that part. Corner round. You can change if you want a box. Keystroke visible for. Is there a way to get. We're going to talk super slow right now. Because the, our, our clip is very <laughs> slow. Is there a way to get it to do kind of like a. Animate. A typing looking thing to keep each letter on there? No. Not at the moment. Not at the moment. So that that's one thing you might run into. It's not going to be able to show you the full extent of what you're typing, but it'll show you key by key mm -hmm. what is going on. And what is attached to clip here? Okay, so what happens here is this is attached to the bottom of the clip. So if we were to actually highlight like the corner of our canvas and you know zoom in we would lose those keystrokes because it's attached to the clip at the bottom so in version six this was sort of a feature request uh, we had to detach that so you could move it to the position where your canvas you is know showing. i i never knew that and i've strayed away from using this because in previous versions screenflow 4 screenflow 5 you have this on here and you want to show people but then you want to focus on this demos and tutorials area and watch what happens it disappears off the bottom of the mm -hmm. screen this is awesome because now I can unattach it and no matter what I do, that clip will stay at the bottom. Yep. That is awesome. I didn't Good even know. know. Hey, we learn something new here sometimes as well. So. Oh, yeah. That's awesome. So that's the oh, basics. Gina. Gina. <laughs> hey, hey Gina. Gina. What's going on? <laughs> we missed you, kid. Uh, Gina cookies. used to work with us. She's pretty rad. She is. She was actually the product manager for this very product. That's true. That is true. I almost forgot about that. And like 900 other products. but That's, <laughs> that's not part of the conversation <laughs> at the moment. Um, so, yeah. Anything else to say about screen recording? I mean, this is... That's this the most cut and dry properties pane in this whole situation. Yeah, I got to say, this is one that I rarely use mm -hmm. in my... The showing the mouse pointer, I often will take the mouse pointer out, but that's the most I ever use in this whole panel. Uh, not, yep. th not that you can't use it. It just doesn't seem to come up mm -hmm. in everyday screen recording yeah. editing. I like to use the radar effect when showing tutorials because if I'm clicking on something in the software, I want you to know when that has happened. So yeah. that's, that's when that will come up for me. So if you guys have any questions about the screen recording properties, let us know. Type them into the comments there. We'll do our best to answer the question. But for now, we're going to move on over to callouts, which couldn't be more different than screen recordings. I use callouts in every single video that I make, uh, and which I use them often. Yeah, probably one of the good features of ScreenFlow to bring attention to a screencasting. Otherwise, you're just watching a recorded screen. Yeah. So let's delete all of this because we still have this recording up here and we can pull it in. Ooh, see that? That's non-destructive editing. Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, one of the nice things about this actually, you know what we should do? What should we do? Should we do another screen recording where we have two windows on the screen? You can do that. I think we should. Let me, let me do another quick screen recording. It'll help with showing um what we're working on here so let's make this a little bit smaller and you know what we'll do is we'll do a we'll do a screen or a chrome versus safari showdown Ooh. how do you like that <laughs> to oh let's let's start with recording so we're gonna do a quick recording here we're gonna go to telestream.net Come on, Chrome. Safari's showing you up right now. Wow, it's really, mm. really showing you up. That's really incredible. Chroming along. <laughs> that was real funny, Abdul. 
All right. Well, I am quite impressed that we can't even get there on Chrome right now. But the point is not to get to the website. It's to show you when we have multiple windows on the screen and we're doing a screen recording. So let's move some things like this just to get a little bit of variety. And we can stop the recording. All right. So now we've got 38 seconds, 37 seconds of stuff going on. Um, so let's come over here to the callouts. And Abdul, you want to start? Um, no. You start. No, I'm I just like kidding. That. I like that. No, I don't even <laughs> want to be here. Like, well, let's just talk about the overall. I'll just talk about what's going on here. So obviously we touched on the fact that you have to highlight a clip in order to see the properties for whatever property you're, you know, trying to adjust. So, you know, let's show a clip. Boom. Here they are. So we have these and then people get in here and they're like okay well how do i add this so second step would be to actually add an action so a call out action bam we hit that and you see that a call out is placed on the clip at the front of the scrubber or behind the scrubber if you will and by default it goes to this mouse cursor selection so what will happen here is this will basically follow the cursor around so if that's what you would like to highlight or call attention to, that's hence the call out. And of course, if you want to make it longer, you can easily just click and drag the sides of the call out itself. Like so, shazam. And we're back in call out mode. So as you can see, it's going to follow the mouse wherever we want to. Um, we can delete that just by highlighting the call out and hitting the delete key. Add another one. And let's say we would like to highlight the foreground window. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. So let's see if that will actually change. Dun, dun. Do I switch between again? Ooh. Well. So what happens is it will, when you add that call out, it's going to grab the foreground window. But if you change it, it's going to lose focus on that foreground window because once you make that action, it finds the foreground window and says that's the foreground foreground window. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm losing my words here. Mm -hmm. And then once you bring something on top of it, it needs Gone. to be reset. So you're right. going to have to find – you're going to have to add a new uh, call-out action at that point if you want to focus on a different window. Got it. As well, we can add another – Callout, which is the freehand callout. So if I just wanted to go in here and highlight, say this this little thumbnail here, I could go in here. By default, it's going to give us a circle, but we can select this square or rectangular tool, which is this is what I use all the time. All the time. So now we've highlighted this. Um, say this was sensitive information, and we wanted to blur it. We could do so. Um, we could blur the background altogether, and you'll see what that looks like with opacity off. Um, so it's kind of blurred the background and focused on this. We can even zoom up on that particular callout and really bring attention to it. Um, so there, those are basically... Um, well, before we continue here, the zoom is something... I want to tell you why I generally use the zoom. Okay. Um, let's say we really want to focus in on this little tiny thing where it says save let's remove that call yeah out let's start quick. out start from scratch on this bottom this uh this this chrome window here there's a little tiny thing that says save right there and what i can do to focus some energy on it is bring it like this right but if i really want to get as close as i can i kind of lose almost everything that we have in the window i I get lost in the screen. Even though I'm seeing this part, this save button that I want to highlight, I'm losing the, the context of where it is on my screen, and it's hard for people to follow when you're that focused in on something. So one thing that's really good when you're focusing on something really small is instead of zooming in all the way into that little spot, zoom in this far because they still have context of where on the screen you are, but then add a call-out action to it. Let's go to freehand, square, focus on this little guy the save button let's get no opacity i don't really care about the opacity but i just want to zoom up that little spot and that way we can focus in on that little tiny spot that we're looking for but we don't lose ourselves in a too zoomed in screen if that makes sense that's one way that i use the zoom 
I think, pretty effectively. And if you want to get it even more powerful, blur the background. It's very subtle, but it helps to take people's view away from what's going on behind, and you can really add a little bit of emphasis to this part right here. Um, to show you what this might look like, we want to have a build-in and build-out duration. And what that means is the time, the build-in duration is the time that it takes for this call-out to go full size. So right now we have zero build-in and zero build-out duration. So we're going to be in this little zone. And then once we get to that call-out, boom, it's just going to pop up. Background's going to blur out. And when it's done, it's going to disappear. But it looks a whole lot better if you add maybe 0.2 seconds of in and out duration. Watch what happens now. As we get there, a little smoother. Much smoother. It comes in and then goes out. And if you saw, like, it's, it's, if you were just looking at this full screen, with these build in, build out durations, it's very apparent what I want you to look at. I just blew it up in your face and then took it away. If we get rid of those, it's not necessarily as easy to see that there's something new to see on the screen. It's just like, whoa, what just happened to the screen? Mm -hmm. Oh, there's that big part there, and it's already gone. So it's really helpful to add those in and out durations to help focus people's eyes. Um, to give you an idea of what this would look like if you were to take a full screen and let's say we're doing a software tutorial. This is our app. This Google Chrome is our app, and we want to show them that little save button. What I would do, if we harken back to last week, go to this video tab and add a video action. And at the end of the video action, I want the screen to be here. I'm going to have a curve type, which is something we talked about as well. And that's going to zoom down into that area. And once I get there, I'm going to add this callout, and actually I can overlap callouts and video actions. That's a, that's a cool right. feature which helps you do things simultaneously. However, we cannot overlap callouts, and we cannot overlap video actions. You mean video action on video action Correct. doesn't work? Correct. Callout on callout doesn't work, but callout and video action can be overlapped. Uh, so let's add a two-second build in and out dur duration. Let's freehand square on this little save button. Let's zoom it up nice and big, and let's get the opacity out but blur the background. So now, this is what that whole process looks like. Zoom in, focus on that one little area, and take Ooh, it out. Let's snap back action. On Should that, we snap back way. action that? Okay, watch this. So if you guys weren't here last month, there's this really cool thing, snap back actions video and that's going to do the opposite of the other video action so now here we go boom done and back to where we started change that curve type to ease in ease out now it's going to look super slick mm. well, i kind of i kind of like if we overlap both of them now it's going to look really cool whoa ah. so smooth and that's a really nice way to <coughs> Use video actions, video snapback actions, and these callouts to really focus somebody's eye somewhere, but have it be really smooth instead of just this choppy like jump there and look and back. Mm -hmm. You're gonna you're gonna really I think that you viewers will appreciate that level of It's the little things. It's the little things, it's you know? That's things. what it all comes down to. Yeah. It really does. Mm -hmm. Um we also have other things that we can do here in the callouts. Um you can add a shadow. I don't think Yeah. Ooh, you know, you know, <laughs> let's see how it looks now. It's probably even better. Ooh, now you're really oh, not going to miss that. Mystique. Obviously, you'd probably want to make that a little bit longer if you're actually trying to show somebody that there's something there. Right. And but then here's the, the save of, button. Please. But now we're going to go back to that other window. Uh, of course, you're going to need the, the voiceover. Um, and then your feathering. Sold separately. <laughs> As I add feathering to this. Essentially what that means, when you have no feathering, you're going to have this hard line that I made with the rectangle. But as I add a little bit of feathering, that kind of goes away. Basically there's no an edge blur. Yeah, there's no right or wrong way to use that. If you want to use it, it's a, it's a, it's, you know, just. It's there. It's there. It's the little things. 
the little like things. Like we said. Um, one thing I would recommend, though, is if you're doing a – if you have a project that has a lot of these things, where you've got a lot of little tiny things that you want to focus on, once you do your first one like this, come up here to this little gear icon next to the Add Action button and make settings default for new callouts. So now it's going to remember everything here. So if we go somewhere else, let's try a different part of the screen, and we want to add a new callout action to this right here. There you go. Feather, build in duration, zoom level. All that is retained. So now I don't have to go in and make sure it's all the same with everyone else. And then let's make another one. That, that one I actually didn't really like the look of because I made it too close to the edge. One thing that will happen, maybe it's good to point out, that you saw there, is if you make the, the zoom of a certain part of your screen so big that it would go off of your main canvas, watch what happens. If we go really slowly here, as it gets bigger, you can see it hits the boundary of our canvas and then continues growing in. So instead of having this nice big open from the middle, it's going to go until it hits and then move over to fit on the screen. A little jerky. Which I don't, I don't generally like. Um, so you might want to just adjust your settings to make sure that that doesn't happen. Maybe drop the zoom of this particular thing just a little bit. That way, when it comes in, it's just going to stay in that size. Um, but you don't have to change your default actions all the way through. Mm -hmm. So what else have we got here with callouts and screen recordings? That is really about it. Other than we can point out that we, you know, if we wanted to also save a particular callout, we can do this, create a template action, and just say uh, callout1 for example. And as Lucas pointed out, we have this little kind of settings option. Now we have a call out that we've created ourselves and we can do this, you know, till day's end. We can have a thousand of these okay, in here. Okay. Okay. We're going to have to you're going to have to do that again cuz I what? Didn't know that was something you could do and I didn't quite follow that. Okay. So let's let's so try again. We have these here. I'm going to go to my actions manager. And I'm going to remove that call out. So select it, delete it, close this. You really do learn something new every day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> as, as that guy over there. <laughs> sorry, we're looking at Lucas's. My, Lucas my six-month-old son is out there, and he's got a little Tyrannosaurus Rex hat on, and he's looking real cute. He's working. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Lucas had pointed out that you can make settings default, but if you have a need for more than just one default setting, you can actually create a template of your choosing or of your liking, and however you made it. So for instance, you just simply right click or control click if that's where you're at and choose create template action. This brings up a naming dialog box. Mm -hmm. going to now call this Call out one. Now I'm seeing where I'm we're going, going to with select this. the create button. And now that has been set over here in the call outs. This will only show up in this particular properties area. Call out settings options. There it is. So if I wanted to come in here and add something similar, hopefully this will fit. You just got to add it here. You got to. Yeah. Boom. So there it is. Luckily, it, it just fit. So it's added that call out with the same properties as this. And it will do the exact same thing. So that's another way to sort of, you know, I guess make your workflow a little more efficient down the long run if you're doing this over and over and over. When you find yourself doing things over and over, when it comes to video callouts, video actions, audio actions, you can create custom templates. Which is really nice because you saw how long it took me to, to add that initial callout. We had to go through, we had to choose freehand, choose square, find it change the opacity and the blur, blur the background, change the zoom, add a shadow, feather it, add an in and out duration. Now you just do that one time for each style and you have them already set up and ready to go. Indeed. Um, and I think that's just about all that we had for today, but I don't want to leave quite yet because I want to ask, answer any questions. It looks like there's 24, 25 of you out there watching. Please <laughs> throw your questions our way. We would love to hear what you guys are thinking. And uh, we would love to be able to answer some questions for you. So we're going to sit here. 
stare blankly at the screen for two minutes while we wait for questions. <laughs> oh, someone said hi, guys. It's almost a question. I'm not sure how to say your name. Is that Ojela, 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 Frank? That's a really cool name. I've never seen that before. Um, but yeah, please throw some questions our way. If not, just to let you know, we will be having another ScreenFlow live show the first Wednesday of the next month, which is... Where's your calendar? I forgot the date already. Well, from a month from now. Here we go. Here's a calendar. Hi, I looked for a way a second and didn't see how you accessed the Actions Manager. Alex Ruiz, we will tell you in a second. Yep. It's going to be June 7th. Here, here's a nice little calendar. June 7th will be our next show. Um, let's... Uh, YouTube question. Can you touch on the export options to render at 720p and 1080p? We can. Absolutely. Let me answer this first question first. How did you get to that actions manager? ScreenFlow menu actions. Action. Manage templates. Boom. There they are. Look at that. Look at that. That's where it is. Very easy to get to. And that's where you can see all of the ones that you've made in the past. Um, can we touch on export? Yes. Let's do that real fast. For those of you who don't know, if you want to export your videos from ScreenFlow, file, export. That will bring up an export menu. Do you mind moving this over? I don't bit? mind. So you change the name where you want to save it. If you want to be uploading to YouTube, for example, and you want to do either 720 or 10p, 1080p, I'm going to give you what I think is the most basic, good way to start. Come into ScreenFlow and choose Web High. But you'll see here that we're H.264 video encoding at 1200 kbits per second AAC audio encoding. I almost like that, but we're missing something very important. So come down to Customize, and in here, H.264 video, change this data rate 8,000 to 12,000, depending on what you want to do. It, it's well, per recommendations from YouTube, uh, 10,000 would, would refer to 1080p at 30 frames per second, which you'll see here in the above option at frame rate you can go up and hit 60 you can also type in there if you've got 24 23 9 8 whatever you want to type in there don't be afraid you can actually type in there so a lot of people submit feature requests for that but <laughs> it's already in there you can just <laughs> type it just so it. Um, YouTube would recommend 12,000 for 1080p at 60 frames per second so anything above if you're going 12,000 with a 30 frames per second uh, project that is overkill at the very least you're creating more um, file size for no reason just yeah. so you're aware I wasn't aware so I will stop doing that okay stop doing that um, but in general 30 frames per second 10,000 here is gonna be really good you say okay make sure that you then come down to dimensions sometimes this will be at 50% which is a 960 by 540 video that's not what you're looking for you want 1920 by 1080 and then you can export. If you want to do um, 720. 720, would that be not quite no, there? No, you can do a scale to custom. Let's do there. That's right. That's right. Um, 1080p, this would be 720. Mm -hmm. What's the width on 720? 1280. 1280. So just come down there and do that. And then you can, if you want, drop the, uh, the data rate. It's not necessary. Right. But you can maybe, what is that, 8,000? 8,000 would be good for 720 upload to YouTube. Now, if the question that came in regarding this was referring to the publish to YouTube options, then that's pretty cut and dry as well. You would just go file, publish to YouTube, and then you have the presets that are already built in. So And they will make it what it needs to be. Right. There will be some uh, some additional converting once it's uploaded. So, but anyway, that's that question hopefully covered. Yeah. I saw a couple other questions in here. Okay. Scroll down. Um, can you use an iPhone Alex. camera as a video source now, say with the Wirecast app? Um, you can. It's different, though. We can't record the video camera of an iPhone through record video from. You would have to record screen 
and that's in the re new recording setup. So over here, configure recording. If we had an attached iPhone, you would simply select this. It's not available because we don't have one connected. And then you would use your camera to turn that on, and that essentially is recording your screen. So that's that's possible. A bit of a nuisance, so um, for whatever reason, but it's it's not as cut and dry as the Wirecast option mm -hmm. for that question. Yeah. Um, looks like the end of the questions there, Alex. You're welcome. Uh, so yeah, everyone who did show up, wait, wait, did we? Are they safe for future viewing? Actually, somebody answered that. Oh, okay. Scroll up. Did they? Yeah, you can find all of our videos. Someone said, are these videos saved for future viewing? Yes, they are. Uh, you should be able to find them on our resources page, which I showed you earlier. Let's go here to Safari. Thank you, Beverly. Solutions. That's not what I wanted. I wanted products. Screen flow. Resources. Um, demos and tutorials. We got lots of videos on here. Plus, we're constantly having more videos and more stuff. I think we have them up on our YouTube page as well. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, you can find them just about anywhere. And they should be on the ScreenFlow page as well. If you scroll down, you should find past uh, discussions, mm -hmm. shows, what have you. Yeah, Wayne Harrison, that's, that's one of the biggest issues. And I've yet to find... Um, I've yet to find an app on iPhone that allows you to use it as a camera or even just like, yeah, I guess a camera without any icons on it, which is really frustrating. Mm -hmm. um, if you find one, that would be the best way to do it. But I haven't found one in the past because every time you open up the camera on an iPhone, it's got all of its icon overlays, which mm -hmm. is a pain in the butt. So Not to mention the autofocus on an iPhone is so sensitive. You're going to yeah. get a lot of like jitter blurs and things like that. So. There are ways to do it. It's not highly recommended, and it can get a little tricky. Essentially, was what it comes down to. All right, everyone. I think we're going to call it a show there. Thank you so much for coming. Don't forget, we will be here June seventh. Um, oh no, that one is audio actions Most and of. video motion, I believe. Okay. Because now that I remember the <laughs> promo we'll that we made if for that's it. incorrect information. <laughs> I'm pretty Sorry. sure that's what we're doing. Um, <laughs> That will be the next one. Also on June 15th, we are doing a ScreenFlow Basics where we'll do stuff like this, but we'll go real in-depth on everything, and I'll answer as many questions as I possibly can. Uh, you can see that info. We've got a super sweet tech team back there who is constantly listening to what I'm saying and putting up the awesome information. Boom. So, Abdul, any, any parting words? Um, yeah, well, if you submit a ticket, I'm sure I will be helping you most likely, or Robert perhaps, but yeah, we got you covered. And... Uh, yeah, I mean, you can send an email to me if you want. Lucas B at Telestream. But that's not the best way to get help, <laughs> to tell you the truth. I, I just didn't want to be overshadowed by Abdul. He's just much more helpful than I am once we leave this show. This so. is true. Um, thanks, everyone, for coming, and we will see you guys all next month. Hey. Peace. Enjoy.